in this lesson, we'll start to build out a reusable button component. Now, in the previous lesson, I accidentally mentioned that we have three buttons in our app. We no longer have that because we replaced two of our buttons with our React Switch component. But regardless, a button is typically a component that you can reuse in many different places throughout the app. So what I want to do is build a reusable button component that we can use to eventually replace this button with. We're going to allow our new button to have both its own set of base styles, so kind of some starter styles that it's going to always start out with, but we're also going to allow the parent component that renders our button component to customize some of the button styles as well. And this is all to give us additional practice with React, with class components, and review some concepts that we've talked about over the last couple sections. So let's begin by creating our new file to house our new component. So right here in the source directory, I'm going to create a new component file. I'm gonna call it button.jsx. And I'm gonna drag this button to the right-hand side so we can see what's going on in app and use it as inspiration for the component that we want to build. So we can build this button as either a class-based component or a function component. Since we are covering class components in this section, let's keep with that tradition and make it a class component. So I'm going to say class button, and this is going to extend React's component class. And since we're referencing react.component, we are gonna to need to import React at the very top. So import React from React. All right, and we only need a constructor if we are going to declare state. And for now, our button component is not going to have any state. So the only requirement that we need then is a render method that returns some bit of JSX. So right here, I'm going to return something. And what that something is going to be is going to be a basic HTML button like so. So I'm just gonna write button right here so we don't forget. And this is kind of our starter place. There's a couple additional things I want to do here though. As I mentioned, I want to define some base styles, some starter styles, and also allow the parent to customize some of those styles as well. So here's a really cool approach that we can take. What we can do is allow the parent that is rendering the button to provide a prop. And that prop can specify, for example, the tailwind styles that we should apply in addition to or on top of the base styles that we define. So here's how something like that might look. What I'm going to do is define a constant here and I'm gonna call it base classes. This is just going to be a string with all of the Tailwind classes that I always want to apply. So I'm gonna keep the parts that I like about my button right here. Let's say I want my generic button component to have a H10 class for a specified height. Let's say I want to make sure it is rounded. Let's say I give it a thick border with border two, and I make that border solid with border solid. So I've basically taken some classes here that I like that I want to always be present. And then I also want the parent to customize whatever classes it wants or add on additional classes on top of these, or even replace these. Basically, I want something like a starter template that's a reasonable looking button, but then also allow the parent to shape it in the way that it wants. So here's what I can do. I can decide that the parent is going to give me a prop. Let's call that prop class name. And class name is going to be a string of additional Tailwind CSS classes. So we know on a class component that we're going to have access to this.props. And let's assume that I'm going to get a prop from the parent called class name. And the reason I'm using the name class name is just to be consistent with the way that we write class name right here for all of our other JSX elements, right? This is going to be a component that is going to receive a class name uh, prop, not a regular HTML element, but I'm keeping the exact same name for consistency's sake. So let's assume that class name is going to be a string of some additional Tailwind classes. And what I want to do is apply these first and then apply whatever additional classes I have in the string afterwards. So what I can do here is define a const called merged classes. And this is going to be an ES6 template string, which allows me to interpolate other variables within this string. So I'm first going to interpolate whatever base classes is. So I'm going to start with those starter classes I have above those four classes. And then whatever classes are present in the class name string, I'm going to add those at the end by interpolating class name as well. And the beautiful part here is if class name has some kind of tailwind class uh, that is overriding one of these, for example, if class name has something like 
H12, right? A little bit more height for the button. Then because H12 comes later in the list here, it will actually override or take precedence over this H10 and, and win out. So thus, the parent that passes in the class name prop value can customize any one of these. But if it chooses not to do so, we're simply going to fall back on these four classes and then whatever additional ones that the parent component wants to give me. All right. So we have our merge classes string, which is sort of the final string of all the class names combined. So what I'm going to do is provide the class name attribute right here. This is regular React. And I'm just going to provide it that dynamic string of merge classes, which is going to give it all of those classes in a single string. All of those Tailwind utility classes are now just in line right here. All right. The only other thing I want to customize is going to be, of course, the text that is displayed on the button. We can certainly provide it as a prop, but a more convenient pattern that you're going to see is using children instead. And the reason we do that is once again to maintain its similarity with the way that the native HTML button element works. The way a button works here is we have our opening button tag and our closing button tag, and the text goes in between. So if we want to honor that spirit, that kind of design of HTML in uh, React, we don't want to have, for example, a button like so that has a text prop. This is totally valid, right? It's going to be uh, technically correct, but what you'll see more often is that people will keep the, H the uh, React component of button and allow the user to specify the text in between the opening and, and closing tags like so. Right? And as we know, whatever we place between the opening and closing tags in the parent is given to the component as a specific prop called children. So if we want access to this, we can define a prop on button called children. And this will be whatever is in between the opening button tag and the closing button component tag. And then whatever children is, I'm simply going to render in between my HTML button element, the opening tag of that and the closing tag of that. So right here, I'm going to use my curly brace syntax and pass in children. So for example, if my parent component renders my button component like so, it's going to be hello, and hello is what's going to be plugged in right here as children. And if they want to be even more complex, like for example, having an image and something like that, totally fine. We're just gonna take all that child content and just inject it right here in between the opening and closing HTML button element tags. All right, so that is our basic button design. We have to make sure that we export this component. So I'm going to say export default button. And then finally, since we installed the prop types in the previous lesson, I want to make sure we add that prop validation, right? This component is going to accept two props, uh, children and class name, and I want to define the types for both of them. So right here, I'm going to import prop types, capital P, capital T. That's going to come from the prop dash types library that we installed in the previous lesson. And as you may recall, the way this logic works, is below the component, regardless of whether it is a class component or a function component, the same logic applies. We take the component, we add a dot prop types property, and we make that an object. The properties of the object are the prop names themselves. So in this case, we're going to start off with class name, and we're also going to have children. And then the values are going to be the types, the data types of those respective props. So for here, for example, class name is going to be prop types dot string. And we can also add on a dot and is required to indicate that the parent must provide this value in. There's no default fallback value or anything like that. The parent must give me this. And for children, since I want this to be basically anything that is renderable to the screen, whether it be a string or another React component or some kind of HTML element, one catch-all category that encompasses all that is prop types dot node. A node is basically anything that we can render visually to the screen. And here I'm gonna make that required as well. I'm gonna let Prettier do its work. And here is our new reusable button component. And again, it may not seem uh, as easily apparent when we only have one button in the app, but now the advantage of an approach like this is we could start to isolate some of the things that all buttons have in common, such as common classes or common logic to its own separate component but also pave the way for some dynamic customization from the parent by enabling things like a class name prop or by utilizing 
the children feature of React as we're using right here. That's kind of the, the fun part of React is figuring out how you can isolate the things that are the same and also enable variance or variation. So kind of making a component as useful and as flexible as possible while still keeping it tight and controlled and having a single purpose for existing. All right, so here is our new button component and we're going to, of course, render it in our app component in the very next lesson.